Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at modifying and adding bones to your rig. First, we're going to look at importing the FBX, then we're going to look at modifying the bones, and then we're going to add some bones to our rig that we exported from Mixamo. Let's jump in. So the first thing we need to do is import our FBX that we rigged in Mixamo. It is possible to create a rig from scratch, but I find Mixamo gives a big speed boost to getting started in creating a rig that Unity can use for VRM creation and a head start on weight painting or assigning your avatar vertices to the skeleton. So we need to go file, import, FBX. We're going to go to our asset that we exported from Mixamo and then just go import FBX. So as you can see, we actually have our uh, rig and our asset. If I go to the avatar, so the rig, and go to pose mode, I can actually rotate some of these and it will show that we have rigged the asset in Mixamo. As noted in the previous tutorial, some of our bones in my case are not correct. If I go to x-ray mode, the knee is inward a bit. So I'm going to quickly edit that by going to edit mode, selecting this, and then just moving it on the x-axis to there. This edit wouldn't affect the weight paints, so I could, if I wanted to, export this as is, as could you if you're not adding bones or refining the weight painting. But in this case, I'm going to add a few extra bones. Extra bones can be used for many different reasons. One is you might have some extra elements that you want to rig. The thing is, at the moment, Mona doesn't support custom animations. So if you create a bone to animate, that will not be animated with the animations that are being used unless it's of the base humanoid mesh. That said, it is possible to use what they call spring bones to add secondary motion to certain elements such as cloth or hair, anything that would have kind of like a sway based on movement. So as an example, uh, we have our two scarves here. Um, I could do this as well, but today we're gonna be focusing on these two scarves so that they sort of flap around a bit when you run, which adds a whole extra layer of believability to the character. And for that, we need new bones. So let's go into edit mode. I'm going to see through so we can do that. Now I want these scarves to be based off the spine here. If I rotate that, in pose mode, you will note that the arms are children of this object. So I actually want these to be children as well. So to save an edit, uh, basically I'm going to shift duplicate that. And then I can start editing the asset. If I want to change the parent from this bone uh, and say I want to put it on this bone, this is very easy to do. Once again, being in edit mode, I select the child bone, then the parent bone using shift, and then go right mouse click parent, make, and then keep offset. That will allow you to rotate the position of that bone to the parent that you've set it. Now, if I want to add a bone to another bone, I can click the end, which is recommended. I could do this, but I usually just do the end and press E. Now, before doing that though, I'm going to rename this one. So if we go down to bone and we have this, I'm gonna keep the order and just go left scarf, that one. So when I extend it, that will keep the naming of that asset. So two, three, four. Now, the other thing to note with these is we want to sort of lean our bones to be at the position on the asset. So if I go to the asset, uh, go to this one here, which is object properties and make it wireframe. That way I can see the polygons a little clearer. So when I'm editing my asset, I can put them on the key points uh, there. Now, Generally, you want to have as few bones as possible, so there's less to worry about, especially when you're looking at secondary because it'll be computing a lot of these. So I'm actually going to just sort of mainly do three of these bones. 
and I can sort of blend these between them. So, so that's the front. Uh, the next thing we need to do is the right. I can also use shift to select multiple if I want to do that. And then G to move. Once again, we're going to move these to the scarf positioning. And there we go. Now, another useful tool that you could use is this one. So if I go to volume and turn snap on, that will move the asset to the center of that asset. So if I do it here, you'll see that it sort of moves to the center of the coat. Uh, but if I do that, it'll move to the center of the leg. So that's super useful for things like fingers. So you don't have to figure out exactly where to put it. But in this case, this would be pretty easy. All right, so we have our three. That is apparent to this one. So I could just duplicate these three again. So shift D and X to move over here. And as this is slightly different, I'm going to adjust accordingly, like so. That seems correct. So we have our three extra bones. Now, if we go to the pose mode, we want to make sure that if I rotate, the scarf will be moving with it, which is great. The thing is also because we exported from Mixamo as a T-pose, the default position and the T-pose position is slightly different. In the object data properties panel, you can set the pose position or the rest position with these sorts of things, depending on what you're doing. After that, we need to look at weight painting these bones, but we'll be saving that for the next video. So that'll be it for this one. Have a nice day and happy building.